Today on Trash Panda Off-Road, we got to flush the radiator out on the Trash Panda. I'm going to start off here by apologizing if this video looks like hell. The uh, My phone is what I do almost all of my stuff on, and it's on its last leg. i got to go get a new phone. So until I do that, this video is, I don't know. I'm getting spots on my version. I don't know if you get them on yours or not. We'll find out in the editing process. So what we've got to do is we've got to flush the radiator out on the Trash Panda. Now that we've got the Toyota axles under it, we're going to take it out next weekend, hopefully. And we did notice that what we thought was a blown head gasket turned out to not be a blown head gasket. There was actually a, like a freeze plug in there underneath the cam. And it had corroded away, and then parts around it had corroded away. So what was happening is that's where we were getting water mixing in with. So we had it all fixed up, cleaned up, put back together. And now we need to flush the coolant system out because there's still crap in it. Let's see if we can see here. A little bit. You can still see a little bit. There's like some oily, oily nastiness on there. And then, oh, look at that. See, that, that crap there has all got to get flushed out of there. See it? So, we're going to have to flush the cooling system. I already changed this box and all these lines. So, we're going to try to flush this out and make it better. We're going to use this Prestone kit. Um, picked it up at the old Walmart there for like four bucks. Basically, you cut it, the heater hose, splice this in there, and then hook the garden hose up to it. So, first step. We got to get the trash panda over here so as that the hose will reach it. Now that we got that to where the hose will reach it, yeah, get up in here and I remove the thermostat. It's two 12 millimeter bolts right here. Pulled that thing out, chucked it away, gotten a new one coming from O'Reilly's. Um, there's a pine cone down here, which is cool. That's lovely. So, down here are your heater hoses right there so the top one is usually the inlet and the bottom one is the outlet so we're going to take the top one and cut it we're going to take the top one of those hoses oh having some technical difficulties so might be a duplicate section here but we're going to take the top one of those hoses cut it Insert the correct T that fits out of this, hose clamp it in there, and then hook the garden hose up to it. Before you get all carried away and started into this, it might be a good idea for you to drain your coolant um, into a suggested container for disposal. I have no coolant in here. I already did all that at Brian's. It's just been running water just to see if the engine will run, stuff like that, so I don't have to worry about that. Got that in there nice and tight um, I just cut it with a pair of scissors slid in the littlest uh, it's a one-half T that package comes with three different T's so I used the one-half T stuck it in there um, I just used a long extension put an eight millimeter on it and zip those tight now you got to put this thing on there uh, it's a backflow preventer so in theory it'll shoot out the sides instead of coming back out so we'll screw that on there, and then we'll hook the garden hose to it. Reaching under there is a little tricky, so I went this way under there. Um, remember, you're threading plastic to metal, so take your time, make sure it's right. I did pull the transmission dipstick out. Now I'm going to put it back. The kit also comes with this cool thing, which would be really cool if it worked. It's supposed to set in there. And that's supposed to, you know, shoot your water so it doesn't just spill all over everything. But it doesn't work in this one. That's too bad. I wonder if I could tape it down. Ratchet strap. Okay, so we put a little uh, bungee cord on there just to try to shoot it so we can get the oil and the crap to come out this way. And yeah, we'll see if it works. I wonder... Let me if I have a tarp or something I can lay right here so that this doesn't get all oily and goopy. I have no idea if that's going to work, but we'll see if we can try to keep some of the goop out of the winch line. 
I'm probably overthinking this and that's probably not even gonna work, but whatever. All right, last piece of the directions before you can actually start it. It says to open the drain, which is right there. Can't see it, but it's right there. It doesn't really say how high, so it's turned on and it looks like, um, where we got water coming from? I guess maybe that was too high for the backfill part, huh? Oh, there I got water in the spill valve. I got water coming out of there. So now it says to turn the truck on with the heater on high for five minutes, no more than 10 minutes. Heater's always on high. Till the water runs clear. Well, it's running clear now, but I don't trust it. So we'll check back in five minutes. All right, it's been six minutes. I just shut it off. It's gonna drain down again. Probably gonna do that two more times at least. Um, so it is running clear, but I don't really think it's all the goops out of it. So yeah, I'm gonna run it a couple more times. A couple things I did notice though. Oh, you know what? I gotta turn the hose off. <laughs> all right, hose is turned off. Now, a couple things that I noticed. First off, the stupid backflow thing was squirting water like crazy and it was squirting right on some of the electronic connections down there. So I had to put this piece of lumber in there to try to keep it from that. If you look closely, right there, see all that goop? That's the kind of stuff I'm trying to get ran out of there. Um, there's also a little bit right here. You see a little bit and there was a whole bunch built up right there on the bumper but most of it's gotten washed away also the cooling system did fill the reservoir so let's see if there's any goop in it oh yeah look at that that's where all the goop ended up dang it I just cleaned that reservoir, or just put that reservoir in because the other one was all goopy. So, we'll pull this one out. <sighs> Obviously, I shouldn't have done that. I should have just left it out like this and let it drip instead of putting it in there. So, now I'll take it out of there. I won't do, make that mistake again. And then in about 10 minutes, I will flush it again. So, I've repeated that cycle three times now. I'm going to unhook all this stuff in the kit on one of those little buggers is this cap. So I'm gonna take this cap and put it on the, after I take off the garden hose and the backflow piece, then I'll put this cap on there and then I will put in a new thermostat. Then I will fill it with some coolant and some more water again. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope it helps somebody out, give you an idea. Pretty simple process, just something. I don't know if you do it for preventative maintenance. I just, I know I needed to do it. If you blow a head gasket or get oil and water mixture, you need to do something like that. So uh, follow along, Instagram, Trash Panda Off-Road, and uh, subscribe to the channel. I got all kinds of stuff coming up. Got our place of transmission in that thing next.